So today with a very shaky camera because I had too much caffeine, we are going to be integrating 1 over 1 plus x to the 4th from minus infinity to infinity with using the residue theorem. Uh, what is the residue theorem? It is something from complex analysis that says the surface integral along any contour of f of z dz where f is analytic on the entire interval of the contour equals 2 pi i times the sum of the residues of f at the poles inside of the contour. So in our case, our f of z, we're going to let it to be 1 over 1 plus z to the fourth, which is analytic, and you can show that using the Cauchy integral or Cauchy whatever theorem. Uh, and our contour, we're going to pick it to be a semicircle uh, like this. It goes around like this. And we're going to let our radius of that semicircle, so this be minus r to r, our radius is going to go from minus infinity to infinity. Now, why did we pick this? Well, it turns out to be very nice. So our surface integral along this uh, contour equals, it's going to have a real part and a complex part. Now, we can show uh, that our complex part is going to go towards zero uh, using some... Uh, approximation inequalities theorems and stuff. So now that we can do that, basically we have the, our surface integral along this contour equals this integral. So as we let r go to infinity, we have this. Our integral along this contour of our complex function is just the integral from minus infinity to infinity of our real function, which equals this. So now, we, we basically need to compute the residues. Now, what are, what is the residue? It is basically the first term of the pole of the, it's basically the, it's the coefficient, it's this b1 right here. I don't, uh, I don't know how to explain it. It's kind of hard to explain, but not really. It's just this b1 right here. And n is the order of the, uh, pole. What is a pole? It's when this denominator equals zero. So now we're going to calculate the residues, and then we're going to plug them in to solve for our integral. Uh, the residue, here's a nice formula for it, is this limit right here. And since all of our poles in our complex function are first, first order, we don't even have to worry about doing any derivatives. Oh, this should be a factorial. Yeah. Uh, we're just going to have basically this right here. So with my very shaky camera and my very shaky handwriting, we shall compute the poles first. So when our denominator, z to the 4 plus 1 equals 0, we have z to the 4 equals minus 1. So then we can have uh, minus 1 equals e to the i pi. And then now we can solve for z. So z equals e to the i pi over 4, e to the i 3 pi over 4, e to the i, uh, i 5 pi over 4, and e to the i 7 pi over 4. So now we need to use the poles that are in our contour, and this goes on, but we mainly need these four. The poles that are in our contour, well, since we have the half circle, right, right like this, the poles are only going to be when uh, the imaginary part is positive. And with this and this, this is where the imaginary part is negative. With these and this, the imaginary part is positive. So we want uh, to find the residue at e to the i pi over 4 and residue at e to the i 3 pi over 4. Now let's complete that. So residue of f at e to the i pi over 4 equals limit as z approaches e to the i pi over 4 of, we don't have to worry about this derivative since the it's first order, it'll be the zero derivative, which is just the function. So we have uh, z minus e to the i pi over 4 uh, times 1 over, times 1 over uh, 1 plus z to the fourth. So now this is this limit right here is in the form of 0 over 0, so we can use L'Hopital's rule. Derivative at the top is just going to be 1, 
since that's a going to be a constant. And derivative at the bottom is just going to be 4z cubed. So this will be limit z approaches e to the i pi over 4 of um, this is 4z cubed. Next, we just plug it in uh, since there's no problem here. So it'll be 1 fourth e to the negative uh, i 3 pi over 4. So we just multiplied the exponents and I brought it up here to the numerator. So that is our first residue. Our, we're going to have to find the other residue and then we're going to add them. So our second residue at e to the i 3 pi over 4 equals, uh, it's going to be the same process. We do limit e to the i 3 pi over 4 and then we have z minus e to the i 3 pi over 4 all over 1 plus z to the 4th. It's going to be the same limit, or not the same, pretty much the same limit. We do L'Hopital's rule, which, and then we'll end up with 1 over uh, 4z cubed equals 1 fourth e to the negative i uh, 9 pi over 4. And which equals, since this is uh, it's, this is basically a full rotation uh, around e to the i negative pi over 4, right? You add 2 pi to this, you get this, whatever that looks like, and you get the same thing. These are the same thing. So now we add them, so our sum of residues equals uh, 1 fourth e to the i negative 3 pi over 4. I'm going to put that in parentheses because that's our angle. And then plus 1 fourth e to the i, and this is negative pi over 4. Okay, a converting to uh, Cartesian coordinates. I'm going to factor out the 1 fourth first times, let's see, this will be cosine negative 3 pi over 4. Uh, plus i sine negative 3 pi over 4 and then plus uh, this will be cosine negative pi over 4 and plus i sine negative pi over 4. That's our sum of residues. Oh man, this is really hard to do with a shaky camera. Um, now we have one, this will be one fourth cosine negative three pi over four is negative one over root two. Uh, sine of negative three, four, or three pi over four is, this will be plus i times negative one over root two. And then cosine of negative pi over four is gonna be positive one over root two. And then sine of negative pi over four is gonna be negative or plus i times negative 1 over root 2. So now we can immediately see that this and this will cancel and these have the same denominator. So th these are like terms basically, we can add them. This will be 1 fourth times negative uh, 2i over root 2. Right, since there was two of them. We can cancel this and we get this equals negative i over uh, the 2 root 2. So that is our sum of residues right here. Now plugging in to the formula, we have, so since we already, we already showed that this integral equals our contour integral right here, we can show that integral from minus infinity to infinity of 1 over 1 plus, oh goodness, this is so hard at the bottom of the page, x to the fourth dx. I promise this is one of my last videos with a shaky camera. I'm getting a tripod soon. I just wanted to make this video since this is part of our homework that's uh, due later this week. And I really liked it. I, or actually, no, that's a lie. Some of the questions towards the end of the homework were super annoying. And then, uh, so yeah, this is equals 2 pi i times our sum of residues, which we found was 
negative i over 2 root 2. So now we cancel the 2's. Uh, negative i times i equals just 1. You can show that. So now we're just left with pi divided by the square root of 2. That is our final answer. Boom.